Hello people of the earth and welcome back to Quick Save TV. My name is Mike and today we're taking a look at what does it take to build a good team uh, to uh, brave any mission in XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. Every mission will be different because of the random generation involved, because of the difficulty, because of the enemy composition, because of the Chosen involved, because of the dark events, because of the orders in play, because of the technology level that you possess and enemy possess, because of the uh, difficulty of each specific encounter, because of so many things that you have them on the right side. They're divided into three groups, the most basic, a little less basic, and uh, specific for your mission. Now, to actually talk about these things, we're gonna uh -huh, go ahead and force the enemy to appear. So we're just gonna go skip all this shit and wait for the enemy attack us. We'll wait for the enemy attacks. So it's gonna be uh, if we don't lose the game before. I've been skipping quite a lot of time to get a mission, but I just seem to not be very lucky with this. And once we get a mission, we can actually talk about how do we select a good mission, you know, etc, etc. I've almost achieved victory. What is that? Legit 13... Really? We have a timer. That's cool. Okay, give me a mission before that because I really want to demonstrate something. I I never seen this timer. Wow, that's so cool. They give us 13 days before they win. This is so easy then. I didn't. I thought if you reach 12, you instantly lose the game. Holy shit, that changes everything. There you go. Communication from the resistance. So let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> and first and foremost, right? Let's take a look at what we see on the screen. It tells us. What is the objective? We need to neutralize the target. We will receive the supplies and intel, that's our reward. We don't see the difficulty, unfortunately, but we see the enemy composition. We see the number of enemies and what kinds of enemies we're going to encounter. You, as you gain experience in the game, yourself as a player, you will learn that different animals are... Animals, holy shit, yes. Different animals, but also different enemies are susceptible to different things. So as you learn that, it's going to be very important for you to understand what you're fighting against. It's going to be super helpful. And this is the Night Demon Assassin that is the Chosen that controls the region. This is the most basic thing you have to pay attention to. That means that she has a chance to appear on this mission. So just knowing that is super important. Let me get back on the screen. Knowing this is super important, but this is not everything. Chosen will not appear on every mission ever, but they will appear in certain situations uh, almost in guaranteed uh, sense. Like when it's a retaliation mission, there's a very high chance the Chosen will appear. It almost never is the case that they, if they don't appear. They almost always, 100% of the time, appear. Um, when you go to a um, supply raid, a lost mission, rescue soldier missions, they, on the other hand, almost never appear. So it's like, you know, it's a little bit ba a little bit balanced. But here, on this specific mission, that it's a good opportunity that she will appear. It's at least, I think, 33%, but it's you never know. So let's take a look at the enemies we will encounter. Spectre, Trooper, Advanced Purifier, Advanced Officer, Heavy Lancer, and Heavy Mech. Who do we have to pay attention from this? Um, several things. Think a little bit for yourself. Pause the video if you must. When you play the game, who do you pay attention to? The enemies who are more annoying, right? The enemies who are difficult to handle. For me, it's going to be Spectre. It's definitely going to be the Lancer and the Heavy Mech. Spectre is a mechanical unit that is susceptible to EMP grenades and EMP bullets, blue screen bullets, right? Heavy Lancer is a piece of shit who goes in melee and is really dangerous. People uh, who are good at handling melee units are really good against him. Also, Flashbang is good against him. And Heavy Mech is, again, a mechanical unit that is a piece of shit, likes to AOE people, does not use cover. Uh, what is good against him? Explosives, um, heavy weaponry that shreds armor, snipers are pretty good against them, blue screen bullets are good against them, so okay. Now that we have that in the back of our skull, right, we, we know we'll need some EMP equipment and we'll need some flashbangs. Let's go. This is the specific mission that we're going to do. Now when you know what you're going to face, it becomes significantly easier to understand what kind of team you're going to have to build. And this is what you have to consider when you go in every mission. Okay, what is the situation? Like, when you have a shadow chamber, it's super easy. But even if you do not, there are basic things that you can think about when you go on a mission. And you can adjust accordingly. Let me just... Whoa, 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 whoa. If the game loads... Cool, I think it works. Okay. So when you go on a mission, neutralize target. What we will have to do? We'll have to neutralize target. And I think evacuate the body. And if so, it means we're gonna have a dark VIP, which we have to catch and carry his ass out of the uh, out of the map to our evacuation point. That means we will have to advance on the enemy positions. What does it mean? That means that classes like Ranger, Templar, Skirmisher, 
Reaper, gonna be really good, especially Skirmisher, Templar and Ranger, because those three classes are really good at attacking enemy positions. So let's go ahead and grab, uh, grab a, Templar, a Templar, grab a Ranger, and grab a Skirmisher. Again, you can have your own preferences, but I'm just giving you a basic idea of what you're doing. This is our three guys who will break enemy formations. We also remember that enemy has a bunch of robotic units. What do we take? We take the best unit to deal with that, Grenadier. Now we have a Grenadier. What would be also an additional good piece for us to have in this mission? Let's think about it. We'll have to advance quickly, and we have a couple of units that are really good at attacking enemy positions. But they have to go really forward. Templar goes in melee, Ranger goes in melee, Skirmisher can flank, but has to be careful about doing so. So who do we take? We take a Reaper to help our Ranger, to help our Templar, Ranger, and Skirmisher go forward. And one last unit, someone that we do not have, someone who would be really helpful with this composition, would be a specialist. So let's grab a specialist too. Now, why? Again, we need Grenadier to have AMP grenades. Why? Because enemy has robotic units. Spectres and mechs are pieces of shit, and uh, also having a flashbang will really help against the stun lancer. Whereas these guys can easily attack the enemy on their ground and destroy them. Whereas the Reaper will go forward and scout ahead and do literally nothing else. He doesn't even have to attack the enemy, but his perma stealth will allow us to go forward and quickly scout ahead, which is super important in a mission like this. Whereas a specialist will provide our utility, right? Now, now that we have our basic combination, right? We have three attackers, we have a heavy unit, we have support, and we have a scout. We have our basic team. Now let's pay attention to a couple of more things before we start the mission, because we're not in a rush. No one's gonna bite us in the ass if we start if we don't start right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay attention to a couple of things. We want to take a look at the current dark events. The dark events that are in play. So active dark events. Here you go. Infiltrator. The aliens hide in ambush amongst the populace placed in hidden faceless aliens on the most missions for a month. What does it mean? We have to be super careful as we advance forward to stay away from civilians because there's a good chance at least one or two of them will be the uh, infiltrator, will be the faceless, right? So we have to pay attention to this. This is one thing that we have to pay attention to. Cool, okay. No bleeding grounds, no grenades, no armor, nothing. Only faceless. Very good. What are our current orders? Do we have any advantage on the enemy? Mental fortitude. Any madness, panic, obsession, berserk and shatter will only last one turn. Good. Effective against lost, not a factor. There's going to be no lost in this mission. Volunteer army. We have a chance that we will have a resistance operative join to us, join us on this particular mission for our squad. So basically, plus one player. Really good. Now we check this. The last thing we want to check is our technology. Technology you usually keep at the back uh, side of your skull, but for us specifically, uh, we don't care. We want to take a look at the leave anyway. Leave anyway. He's not going to let me go. Is he? Access archives. We can take a look at what we have already. And what we do have is... Let me take a look how to better... Okay, we have experimental weapons. We have hunter weapons. That would make our sniper really useful if we can grab one. But we've already decided we're not going to. Because we have to keep a very high tempo of this mission. We have tier 2 armor. We have tier 2 weaponry. Cool. We have everything we need. And why is it important? Because you need to know what tech do you have. Like, for example... If you don't have the best weaponry for your Grenadiers, maybe you want to replace them. If you don't have the best weaponry for your Rangers, maybe it's a good idea to take, instead of a shotgun, to take any assault rifle. It's a common strategy, right? Once you, once you buy the rifles, you don't have any more money, so you just go with uh, any assault rifle, let's say an AK-47 that we added with a mod. But if you don't have a mod, it's gonna look like something like this. Excuse me, I have no idea what's happening. There you go, magnetic rifle. So. Let's now equip our soldiers, and the most important pieces of equipment are our equipment, obviously, uh, and equipment matching situation. What we remember that we needed to take? Do you still remember? We needed some EMP grenades, EMP bullets. Who's good with bullets? Re skirmishers, they shoot twice. Let's give him, make utility items available, let's give him the blue screen rounds, perfect. And as a weapon, let's make weapons available and find our gun that we've upgraded, specifically, there you go, Daredevil, for him to use, with advanced repeater. What could be the secondary item? Well, I mean, in a situation like this, uh, Mimic would be good, EMP Grenade would be good. So let's go ahead and grab an EMP Grenade. I think it's a reasonable solution. For a Ranger, because he's going to be constantly forward, let's put him a Mind Shield, and as a Grenade, let's give him a Flashbang. So that in case that we have to use something, 
will use our flashbang. As a primary weapon, let's equip a shotgun. Why? Because we're going to be attacking the enemy position, and we're not going to be doing it alone. We have uh, Templar and Skirmisher to back us up. Those people, this will be really far ahead doing nothing, and these two people will be behind us following our uh, steps. For Templar, we will equip the Mind Shield because it's a very powerful addition for the Templar. Not being able to be mind controlled is a really, really powerful thing. Now, for our Grenadier, let's equip a bunch of things. First and foremost, let's equip the EMP grenade, because we have already another one, EMP grenade. And as the primary grenade, we could use gas grenades, we could use... I think plasma grenades will be a little bit more consistent in this situation. As a secondary weapon, we can grab... As a secondary equipment slot, we can fill it with something like a Mimic Beacon or Smoke Grenade. I would prefer a Smoke Grenade, because she can throw them further. For our Reaper, we could take... Oh, we could take a bunch of things. We could take... Um, but honestly... Just to deal a little extra damage, we'll take the uh, red screen rounds to do a little bit more damage. For our specialist, we will 100% take Skulljack. They have increased for our hacking skill, 25. We can also use Skulljack and Skull Mine. Skulljack is to advance the story, as you know, and Skull Mine is to get the intel from the enemy. For our secondary, we take the Nano Med Kit to make him a useful healer. For his weapon, <clears throat> we'll literally just take any rifle. Oh, but that's not a rifle. Excuse me. Excuse me with this misclicks, Mike. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now we have a healer too. We have a lot of ordnance against the enemies we're going to meet. Also, to be complete dicks, we could give our Reaper the blue screen rounds. That would be so good as well. Why? Because the enemy has a bunch of robots and Reaper will actually be able to do sick damage to them. It's plus five. So it's going to be from, if I'm not mistaken, from four to five, right? Yeah, four to five plus five. Insane from 9 to 10 damage to robotic enemies, actually making him super useful. So there you go, we just equipped all kinds of shit. We have um, almost on every one of our guys, we have, okay, let's take a Brutalizer here. Brutalizer, Daredevil, Devastator, Vengeance. And for this guy, we could, again, make weapons available. We could take another gun that we have. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you want to complete the mission, it might as well be good. And there you go. We have the equipment that we need. We have the weaponry that we need. We paid attention to everything, we need to pay attention to Faceless on this particular mission. We know that the Assassin might join this fight, the Chosen Assassin, so we have to be careful. We know what we're fighting for, and we know it's gonna be difficult. And now we're good to go. And that's all you need to know when you're building a team. When you build a team against Lost Mission, the Rescue Soldier, Supply Raid, you just have to know what your soldiers can do. What your soldiers can do, Reaper is good stealth unit, good infiltrator. A skirmisher is a good fighter, he can fight until the end. Assault or rather Ranger, is an excellent attacking unit. She can break enemy formations and make way for other units. Grenadier can destroy enemy mechs and is really useful when you have to obliterate the entire map. Specialist can hack things and can heal your units. Super powerful utility unit. And Templar? Templar just runs in, screams and kills everything in his path. So as you know, there's nine classes in the game, in the original game. You have the original five, you have Sparks, and you have Skirmishers, Templars, and the uh, Reapers. By using them effectively on every mission, you can reach success. By using them not effectively, you will not reach as much success. And the real thing here, the real trick, is paying attention to all these little things, the sea traps, if they are in-game, to the difficulty, to the number of enemies, types of enemies, to the enemy chosen, to the dark events, to your orders in place, to the technology level that you possess, to weapon upgrades. All of these things come together, and when you pay attention to every little one, Tactical missions will be so, so, so much easier for you. I thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope this was helpful. This was suggested by one of the subscribers. Uh, I do not remember his name, but he's a guy who speaks Spanish. I really like him. He's really pleasant. I have no idea how he understands what I'm saying, but I'm really glad that I can help him. That's super, super humbling to me. I thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you find this enjoyable and useful, put a like on this video, subscribe to the channel to see more, and tell your friends about me. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you soon.